So today's date is January 21st, 2023. This is Kelly Zakovic representing the City of Savannah Municipal Archives, and I'm interviewing Angela Mack Givens for the Savannah Community Memory Project. We're conducting this interview at the Crusaders Club Community Center. Uh, so thank you for joining us today. You're welcome. All right, so can I have you go ahead and tell us your full name with all of your names? Yes, I'm Angela Mack Givens. And I was born and raised here in White Bluff, um, Coffee Bluff community. And uh, my sister is in collaboration with me on this little portion. Uh, we came up with this idea together. Her name is Florence Mac Bennett. And um, she's not here today. She lives in Atlanta, but she did this along with me. And um, so we wanted to talk about uh, growing up in White Bluff and um, some of the humorous part of the um, of growing up because we. We, we grew up, everything was very funny here. People thought they were funny and they were, names were funny. And that's what I wanted to elaborate on today. The funny nicknames or terms of endearment that we grew up with, pet names. And I wanted to talk about that today. Great, perfect, let's hear yes. it. Let's see. Okay, yes, well, <laughs> I always say that I'm an islander because if, if since you've been coming out here, you notice, you notice that we're surrounded by water. And I think about islands like um, Jamaica, which is an island far away, but we're a close lying um, island because we have, we're surrounded by water and we have these low lying um, islands off the Savannah River. And they're called barrier islands. And there are islands like Arsabal Island, St. Catharines Island, Saplo Islands. And this is where our ancestors came from. And they move away from those islands to this part of, the, of Savannah, to the mainland. And uh, so this is where we grew up, most of us who live here now. So we've lived here most of our lives. And um, we grew up with the same people, same some of the same neighbors, uh, family and friends. And um, we've had some good laughter, good fun. Everything's not always really serious. So we tried to come up with some deep, deep laughter that comes deep from down inside because we have all of this space here in White Bluff and we can laugh as loud as we want to. You notice that the houses are not very close together so we have time to. We like the outdoors here so we cook outdoors like crab boils and shrimp boils and low country boils cooking lots of seafood because we're surrounded by the waters and um, so we're outdoors a lot with family and friends and doing a lot of laughter. And most of that laughter, with, I think, comes from the names that were given to us as, as youngsters, and those names still stick with us today. And it makes me laugh when I hear some of them because it seems like some of those names just um, characterize the person. And I just wanted to name a few of the names today and, um, and share that with um, uh, in the documentary. I, and I'll start with my family, Florence uh, Bennett. Her name is Sister. In our community, we have lots of uh, women named Sister. We don't really just say Sister, we say Sister in the household. So it, my sister is called Sister. We all call her Sister in my family. And I'm assuming Sister came from when we were born. Mom probably said, this is your sister. or told our brothers, this is your sister. So she, her, her name is Sister. And then we have um, some other sisters in the community. We have, um, so that's David and Eloise's sister. And then we have Di's sister. Her name is Josephine, but her mother's name is Di. And this is how we characterize uh, which sister is which by calling their parents' name. And then we have um, Sylvia, little sister. And we have Prince sister. We have Sister Street. We have Sister Porter. Um, Celestine um, family call her sister, and Monk, um, which is my cousin, we call her sister, and she has that other name, Monk, too, which I will get to. And um, then there's Ernestine Ferguson, um, they call her sister in her family. So I can't talk about sisters without talking about brother. <laughs> so in the community, it seems like brother was a kind of a difficult word to say because you have to roll that R. So some of growing up, um, youngsters have a difficult time rolling that R. So instead of saying brother, they say bubba. 
So in our community, we have lots of names whose names are Bubba's, and I'd like to share that with you. And we have um, Butch Bubba, because his dad's name is Butch, so we call him Butch Bubba, and that's how we characterize which Bubba we're talking about. There's Martha Bubba, there's John Francis and Retta Bubba, and then there's Bubba Hall, and there's Bubba Jake. And I laugh at these names because the names just fit the person because we've been calling them since they were kids. Some, some of them are deceased now, but their name went with them, you know, all the way to, their, to the graves. Um, then there is, um, there's some new Bubba's. There's uh, Jackie's grandson, Nikki's little boy, who she's begun calling him Bubba. And then there's um, Miss Mary and, and Cousin Hampy's um, grandson named Bubba. And I like to say too that I'm sure I'm missing some sisters and some bubbas, and I like those who remember more than um, my sister and I do to please give us a call and we will add that to the list. Okay, and so those are just some of the names. Some of the other names that I thought was hilarious, these are just hilarious pet names. Sometimes we don't know how we get a pet name that stuck with us most of our lives. And we, most of these names, I don't know how they came about. But then we have some, some names in our community. They're called Boy, like B-O-Y. Okay, we have Joe Boy. We've called him that all of our, our lives. Then there's Eddie Boy. <laughs> he has a brother named Billy Boy. Yeah, and then there's a lady named Miss Laura who passed away, but she has a son named Boy, so we called him Laura Boy. And then there's uh, my Uncle Laby. They called him Boy, and he was a big guy. So you just couldn't say boy. You know, you had to put some emphasis on it. Boy. So he would answer to that. And then there's Miss Singh Boy. It's a lady named Miss Singh. She has a son named Boy. And then there's a man we call Crooked Boy. Now his legs are very bow-legged. And I've heard, often heard the story that that's how he got his name because he grew up with bow legs. And they called him Crooked Boy. <laughs> So those are some of the fun names. And as we go on, um, I wrote down, my, my sister and I came up with some other hilarious names that were in the neighborhood. And we just kind of stuck to something that was a little humorous. You know, we, I know many of the other people who you interviewed, they talked about the, the landscape and the foods and that kind of thing. But we did something a little bit different, which I hope is all right. I love this. It's okay, awesome. <laughs> all right. So when I laugh, it's because those names just seem like they just represent the person. Okay, the first name here is Uni. There's a young man who lived in the community, he passed away. His name was Uni. We don't know how they got those names. They probably don't know how they got those names. Then there was Pappy. There was Charlie Buckeye. Now that's one of the funniest names to me as a kid. I said, Charlie Buckeye, and I thought that was funny. You know how children would repeat a name over and over again because it sounds funny. <laughs> and then my brother, they called him Popeye. I don't remember his eyes being big or popped or anything, but oh, maybe he was strong. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't think about that. But they called him Popeye. And then there's a knee bone. I don't know how that name came about, but it did. And we still call him that today. Then there's Lottie, and there's Momo, and then there's another Mo. His name is Lance, but we call him Mo. And then sometimes in a family, everybody has a nickname. <laughs> like in this family, they're related to me. There's Pee Wee, there's Rika, and there's Honey. Now, Pee Wee. When she was growing up, she was very tiny and petite, so I'm assuming that's how she got her name. And then Honey, she, I'm sure she's, she was very sweet because she still is today. I'm sure that's how she got her name. But Rika, I do not know, and we call her that today, and she answers to it. I'll ask her one day how did she get that name. I never have asked her. What's her but birth name? Francis. Okay. So it's nothing like Rika in the middle name. I don't know, you know, what it is. But then we have Ponyo. We have Red Buttons. We have Buckshot. <laughs> we have Buck John. And these are relatives to each other. Yeah. Then we have Jimmy Mungalo. Then there was a man who lived in the community called Fell. F-E-L-L. -L. 
And when you would ask him, what is his name? He would say, Fail. That wasn't his real name, though. I knew his real name. I can't remember it. But then there was um, Rock, a man named Rock. And he was really one of the rocks in the community who upheld the community. He passed away. And then um, there's Monk. And then there's Pony. And then there's Rusty. These are just some hilarious names in the community. And I'm sure several other communities have funny names too, but mm -hmm. growing here in White Bluff, <laughs> Coffee Bluff, these names just stood out to me, especially as a kid. And then there's Cheese. I've heard about Cheese. Oh, all right. Then there's Beans. <laughs> Were they related? I don't know. <laughs> I don't think so. Not brothers, cheese and beans? <laughs> I don't think. That's a good question. It could be. <laughs> and then you have Toddy, who was an elderly lady that passed away. Then we had a Dolly, who was a, a female, and a Doby. Then we had a man named Tukas. He passed away just recently, one of the rocks of the community. And we had a young man named Duke, and his grandmother's name was Pudding. But we always end up calling her Puddin', but it's Pudding. And I'm sure that probably was one of those terms of endearment growing up. She was probably as sweet as Pudding. Um, and then we have um, Trouble. <laughs> it's a young man named Trouble. And then we have my great-grandmother. My great-grandmother, um, nickname was Dodo. And um, we, she grew up in on one of those plantation um, farms that I told you about, the Barrier Island, St. Catherine's Island. Mm -hmm. And then she moved here to the mainland and she moved on a street called Rose Dew. And Rose Dew, which is right near here, um, had the coolest place because they had a swimming hole. And many people who live here on this mainland area, they would leave from this area during the summer and go to her house and sit on the benches down by the river to cool off. So there was an area of a nickname there called um, Sea Breeze. They call it Sea Breeze because it was always cool there. And um, her house was called Sea Breeze. The, um, the area, the area where the swimming hole was, and the benches and the cool breeze. They called it Sea Breeze. You know, they may say something like, "Well, I'm going to sit down the Sea Breeze to cool off because again, Savannah gets hot." Are you a Savannah? No, I've been here oh. for seven years. Yeah, well, you know about the heat, <laughs> the Savannah heat. So, um, so that's that's her. But I've always thought that Dodo was an African name because her ancestors came from West Africa because they settled on the coast of St. Catherine's Island, and um, I'm assuming that that was an African name. And then sometimes in the same family we had uh, nicknames. We had people like Buster Heavy. Hmm, that was the father. He had a son called Fudge. <laughs> he was always so funny to me. And then there was Baby Jeep. How do you get a name like that? Like J-E-E-P? Like yes, Fudge. yes. <laughs> and then there were two other brothers in another family, and their name was Cuff, and the other one name was Truck. Mm -hmm. So, you know, these, this is just brings back so much fun, you know, because we were live in this spacious area out here where we can laugh as loud as we want, talk as loud as we want, and everyone thought they were um, a comedian, and everyone was funny to me as a kid. So I would just laugh and laugh and laugh. So that's why my sister and I thought we would bring some humor, you know, to this um, documentary by talking about some of these hilarious names. And a few more. Um, there was a, a gentleman named Luck, L-U-C-K, and then there was a lady called Bootsy. There were two Bootsies in the area. Two Bootsies. Two Bootsies. How and then there were two that? Pee Wees. There was a young man named Pee Wee. I'd already talked about one Pee Wee. And there was two, two men named Pee Wee. Lester Trimble was Pee Wee. Then Bootsy had a brother named Pee Wee. Okay, and then we have Papa Law. And then we had another young man named Boo. <laughs> <Some name. laughs> and then we had Pumpy. His name was he lived right down here, down the street there. And then there was another man named Pump. Yes. And Wilson. 
And then you had son and father, his name was Skipper and Skip. Yeah, and then there was Tramp. Uh oh. And then there was, um, we had a small schoolhouse, like a little one room schoolhouse one time, a long time ago. And um, there was a professor there named Professor Washington. But people didn't say the entire name of Professor, they would say Fess Washington. But everyone knew that they were talking about the teacher of that school. Mm -hmm. And then you had Miss Singh, and you had Shaq, um, a young lady named Kutta, young lady, one of my best friends, she passed a long time ago. But, uh, we called her Kutta. Don't know how that name came about. But like I said, we all grew up near the water here, and um, I think there's a little sea merchant or something called a kudda or something. Maybe that's how she got her name. And then there was a lady named Miss Topsy. And then we had um, Uncle Bud. I had an uncle who we called Bud. Then there was another gentleman in the neighborhood whose name was Bud. And then there was um, Miss Beck and Miss Bay. And the last hilarious name I had here was a gentleman named Nig. So yeah, so those are the funny names I thought that represented um, the White Bluff, Coffee Bluff neighborhood that we got a good laugh out of and we were always together in our respectful yards, um, cooking out, you know, with um, mostly seafood, low country boils and things like that, and uh, laughing and having fun. So these names just kind of triggered things for us. Yeah. Yes. Yes, we've been hearing a lot of these nicknames as we talk to people, and I'm trying to picture, you know, Pit Bootsy, and you know, trying to paint, oh. figure out who everybody is. Oh, and, all right, all right. I love that. Um, so, a couple questions, if I may. Yes. Um, so with the sister, did you only call your sister sister, or did everybody call them? Everybody no. called your sister. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> yes. even if you're not related, it's not yours. That's right. That's right. Yeah, that was just a nickname that they that they earned. Mm -hmm. Sister. Yes. Would you have that and another nickname, or that's what you went by? Oh, sometimes you had two or three nicknames. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Did you get the nickname when you were a kid and it stuck with you? Would your nickname ever change? It was um it was the nickname I didn't name myself yet because I was gonna say that for last yeah. which is not so hilarious but my middle name is Louise mm -hmm. Louise so everyone in my family that was kind of a little pet name in the family they called me Lou, Lou. or Angie Lou yes mm -hmm. so it was there as a child and it, it just it just kept you know stayed there and for most people mm -hmm. was that the case you get your your nickname as a kid and it stayed with stayed you? Stayed with me, right, yes. Um, did people know people's government names? If you said somebody's government name or would you just know them by their nickname? Most times we did know their names. Yes, most times we did know their names. And I called many of the nicknames here and I didn't call their given names, but I know, excuse me, I know most of their given names. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. okay. yes, I just don't know how they came about with these nicknames. Yeah. Yes, but they're, but they're given names. I know what they are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, yeah. And they would just be used like in school, you know, or business ventures or something like that. But in our area, this is what they're known of as. Nice. Mm -hmm. um, Deacon Mac yesterday told us about buh as a, like a formal. He mentioned buh. Yeah. Because I had that listed on mine too. Is that related to Bubba at all? No. Yes. 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 Because I didn't mention that because I thought I was, you know, just giving too much information no. this morning. No. But yeah, Bub, Bub came from, I don't know what he shared. That's my brother yesterday that you oh, interviewed. Okay. And I'm glad he brought that out. But Bub, B U, I think it always referred to, like I said, brother was a hard word to pronounce because you had to roll that R. So, um, Many of the church people, the brothers, the deacons who lived in this area, we would call them Brother David or Brother Herman, but we couldn't say bruh, I mean, they couldn't say it. So we just say buh, but David, but Harry, but Henry. So yeah, 
So you think it's related to the bubba, or would that be a separate sort of? I think it's related to the bubba and the brother. Yes, I really do. Mm -hmm. Um, Were there other nicknames or other place names or other like turns of phrases that were specific out here? Um, Each time I thought of something, I I wrote it down. Or each time my sister thought about something, she Uh uh, called me. And um, and we would collaborate on it and talk about it. And this is all I came up with. So I wanted to tell um, the White Bluff audience that I know I've missed many. (laughs) So please contact me and I will add it to the list. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, And were there any other like community jokes or like sort of just like you know sort of things for people out here that you shared in that laughter and all of that oh yeah there's there are so many i can't think of any now Uh i wish i had thought about some i was just concentrating on names but yeah there are there are lots of jokes that we we say to each other to this day and only us know what it means that's why we would laugh (laughs) because my sisters our grandchildren Sometimes they would hear us. My sister and I would just call a name or, or a phrase, and the two of us would laugh. And they said, what is the problem? You just called out a name or a phrase, and you two laugh. I said, you wouldn't understand. <laughs> so, um, yes, there were some. And I'm sure you've gotten some through your interview. <laughs> yeah. Somebody yes. told us about what the can, where everybody would sit around a fire and talk. Is that oh, yes, that, yes. that would be one, yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I love this. Um, nobody else has told us about the one-room schoolhouse. Can you tell a little bit more oh, about that? Um, I don't know too much about it because it was before my, my time mm-hmm. and, bef- and, and a little before my parents' time. So okay. I've just heard them mention it and mention um, Professor Washington. So I, I can't expound on that, yes. About what time frame was it around oh. then? Like Ooh, 1800s. Oh, okay. Or early 1900s. Mm-hmm. So they were always educated here. And I'm sure some people have shared with you the, uh, the school that we went to in this area, Haven Home Elementary School. We had great teachers, great um, principals, and uh, classmates. And um, we all were, got great education. So, um, what year were you born? I was born in 1947. Did you go to Haven Home all the way through? or? I went to Haven Home, yes. I I didn't go to kindergarten because they didn't have kindergarten. I went first through the eighth grade. And where did you go after that? And then I went to Saul C. Johnson High School where we were bused from this area, passing many schools and going to that area because of our segregation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Were you bused to Haven Home? No, we could um, walk or get a ride or a or, or regular school bus. Mm-hmm. Yeah, regular school bus. Mm-hmm. Very nice. And have you lived out here your whole life? Um, no, I left um, for a while. And then when I came back, I still settled in the same area. <laughs> Very nice. Yes. Um, and so your, your parents are from here as well? Yes, they are. Mm-hmm. Where, yeah. Were your grandparents here, or did your parents? My gra- my grandparents were from here. You heard me talk about those low lying islands. Mm-hmm. Our um, grandparents were born on those low lying islands, St. Catherine's Island and Osceola Island, and then our parents mag- um, migrated to this part of the of, of Savannah called the mainland. So we don't know too much about the islands except word of mouth, but that's where they came from. So. They did bring a lot of names and sayings and yeah. things with them, but we've never been to the islands. Mm-hmm. Next up, some people have gone back there just to see their roots, but I've never been back there. So you're, who was the first generation on the mainland? Your grandparents or your parents? My, my great-grandparents. Okay, they were, okay. Yes. Very nice. Um, I think I already asked you. Any other, you said, turns of phrases or oh, little cool Yes, I can, there's so many, and I can't think of any of them right now. That's okay. Yes. yes. Um, so some of the kind of questions that we're asking everybody, if you don't mind. Um, so you gave us a ton of names. Who of those names, is there anybody that we should really know more about? Or any leaders out here that... 
Um, up. Okay. Yeah, Thayer, everyone is a leader out here <laughs> because we all help each other because we've been neighbors for so long mm -hmm. and have lived next door to each other for, lo for so long. Whatever a neighbor may need, we're right there to help, you know, um, share whatever we have or a ride to the store or um, whatever they may need, we're there. So um, I think everyone out here I call them a leader because we're all helpers of each other. Mm -hmm. Did everybody have a nickname? No. Did and, did that mean anything? Did no, they didn't even have a nickname. No, because several of my brothers they did not have nicknames. Mm -hmm. They may have short names. I didn't write short names down. Mm -hmm. And then we had many juniors in the community too. Mm -hmm. And I didn't name the juniors because I think there were so many juniors in the community that I didn't name them. Mm -hmm. um, if your like, mom was real mad at you, would she call you by your full name and not your nickname? Is it? Say that again. It's like, like if you were if you were in trouble with your mom, would she call you by, <laughs> by your, your real name? Yes, she'd call you by your full name. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yes. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, what out here do people do for work? Um, at, I start with my family. My father was a um, bricklayer. And um, he was educated at um, Savannah State uh, Vocational School. And several other men out in this area were um, got their trade there too. So there were many um, bricklayers in the community. So some of the brick homes that you see, the one that I live in now is my family's house and it was built by my father and some of the men in the community. What year was it built? Oh, 1960. Yes, and then we had lots of uh, fishermen and uh, you know, because that's the um, that's the way the land is here. You know, we're surrounded by water, so we never starve. You know, if you wanted something to eat, you go into the river and catch fish or crabs or oysters, mussels, whatever it might be, and add some vegetables and, and or some rice. You know, and you have a meal. So, um, but many now people are. Um, we have a, a, a local college, Savannah State University, where I attended and several other people. So we have people who are educators and they have our degrees from the university. What did you do for work? I did uh, teaching. So you're in Savannah? Or? Some was in Savannah and some was in Michigan. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, we've heard about the churches. Can you tell us about any anything about the churches that we should know or what church were you a part of? Oh, the churches was our second home <laughs> because we, when I say that, when we were at home, we were in the church. And there we learned um, Easter speeches and we learned how to pronunciate or enunciate words correctly and learn long speeches. And uh, we did plays, Easter plays and Christmas plays and, and we did social, social activities and things like that. So the churches uh, really played a, a big role in our lives. Yeah, and then when we had um, uh, um, racial uh, problems in the community, like when Dr. Martin Luther King would come to town, you know, it would be coming to the churches and, and sharing what we need to know and what we needed to do. Mm -hmm. Did he ever come out here? Um, I don't remember, mm -hmm. but he did come to Savannah, to some of the other places down in the city, but I don't know if he came to the White Bluff area. And what church is your family? My, my family is that uh, we're at two, two churches. My mother's church is Mount Herman Baptist Church, the little red brick um, church right up the street. And my father's family is from Nicholson Baptist Church. So when they got married, they didn't leave the church. They both stayed at each other's churches, but they visited. And we just, we still today visit each other's church in the community. So it's just like one big church, but it's different churches. Mm -hmm. nice. um, people have talked about going, you know, each church had one Sunday a month. Yeah. How long did that go on? Um, did... That went on, then I left the city for a little while, and when I came back, it was, um, it was different. They started um, having it um, every Sunday. Mm -hmm. So that's how it's going on now. Mm -hmm. About what year was that? Oh, um, 1970. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, are there any other organizations or groups out here that we should know about? 
um, where you're sitting here in the Crusaders um, um, facility that I'm sure some people have talked about, and this is a facility that's been around for a long time. Our parents and some of the pictures you see out in the hall, they represent um, um, how long the group has been together and how long what they did was they made sure our community um, was looked out for, for and we got all the things that we needed in this community. So that's, that was one of the groups. And they had several other groups that I can't think of right now. Mm -hmm. Um, so I bet I know the answer to this, but what are some of your favorite memories uh, out here? Oh, I think the food. <laughs> you have heard many people say, because when I went away and stayed for a while, and my parents were still living, I would call my mother, and then I would tell her what I want her to cook for me when I would come home, mm -hmm. like the okra gumbo with the shrimp in it, mm -hmm. and then I would like the crab stew, and um, I loved her fried chicken and her potato salad with the shrimp. And that was one of the things that we did in this area. When we made potato salad, shrimp was in it. Unless it didn't, it wasn't right if the shrimp wasn't in it. So we used a lot of seafood in a lot of our uh, dishes. Mm -hmm. um, was there anybody that was like really known for their food or like- the Everybody people? was known for their food. <laughs> Even some of the people you've met in the, in the other rooms, mm -hmm. they're known for their greens, collard greens, or their potato salad, or their macaroni and cheese, or their um, uh, potato pies, sweet potato pies, that kind of thing. So they all were good cooks out here. Mm -hmm. They all were really good cooks. Mm -hmm. Were any of the recipes ever like written down, or was it you just learned it? From... I think you just learned it, because that's why I don't know a lot of it today. <laughs> I'm not a good cook, but um, you, you learned it. They didn't write the thing down because they use words like put a pinch of this and a jigger of that. You know, you don't know what a pinch or a jigger might be. So um, that's what it is. A lot of recipes were just passed down by word of mouth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so were there any uh, community events where people all came together or anything like that? Oh yes, we had lots of community events every holiday. Like um, I start with Halloween. You know, we always had um, costumes. Um, we had an area where we would um, have costume parties, and uh, I mean, we didn't have the funds to go to the store to buy costumes then. So we would put on some of our parents' uh, big clothes, like my father's big suit, or put on some uh, an old wig or something like that. Then they would have the contest. And then at Christmas time, we would visit each other's home and, um, and, and share gifts with each other, you know, especially family. And, um, and we did that. And yeah, it was, it was always events. There's still events going on to this very day. You know, someone may call and say, oh, I'm having a crab boil this weekend. I want you to come over. We're gonna eat some crabs and, and some potato salad and some beer and, um, you know, have some drinks. So it's, it's always been a social, social community. Mm -hmm. um, so how has this area changed since you've lived here? Um, I think it's changed because I was gone for a, a quite a bit and, and new people moved in the community that um, I don't know. Many of the older ones are still here too though, but it, it changed because um, only because I don't know who they are, not that they're any different or anything, I just don't, haven't met them. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's the, the only change that I see. Everything else, you know, the streets are um, widen. Um, the city takes care of what they need to take care of out here. And um, it's, it's, still, it's still a good community. Mm -hmm. um, what did kids out here do growing up for fun? Oh, we never had a lack of uh, not having fun. <laughs> Because when you mentioned cans a few minutes ago, I remember as a little girl growing up when we didn't have balls to play with, uh, we played with a can, like a baseball. Mm -hmm. We would use a, a, a can, a soda can, and would toss it and would use a broomstick as a handle and we would hit it. You know, it's like hitting a ball in a bat. You just have to be careful to make sure you don't hit anyone. Mm -hmm. But um, so we did lots of baseball in the street and baseball, um, you notice there's a lot of um, um, outdoor space here. So we've always had the space there.
there that you see there where the basketball court is, that's always been a park. So we had we always had lots of ball games, baseball games, softball games, and um, many things that we did on that park out there. Even though it was just racing or volleyball or just just fun, swing sets, things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so 50 years from now, what should we know about this area? 50 years from now? Everything that I just told you, because <laughs> these names are going to remain the same even if they're here or deceased. The name, so if we mention the name of something someone did, we're, we're going to know who, who they're talking about. We have a cemetery um, there behind my church, and um, our ancestors, and even us today, we're still buried there. When we have funerals in this community, we're all buried in that um, cemetery, and it's a beautiful, clean cemetery. We all play our, play our cemetery duties, uh, dues, and uh, they keep the, um, the um, lawn mowed and keep everything up and everything. So that's been in the community for a long time, ever since those ancestors came from those islands. Mm -hmm. And they, when they settled here, they always had a cemetery. So that's something we take pride in. Mm -hmm. is, is that Cedar Grove Cemetery? Yes, you're learning some things about out here, aren't you? <laughs> yes, Cedar Grove Cemetery. Do you know what the oldest burial there is? Like when the well, first person was buried in there? Well, my uh, when I talked about uh, Dodo, um, um, my great-grandmother from um, Africa, that was the 1800s, and, and several of my other great-uncles I remember being um, seeing them. When I would go to the cemetery, I would see their graves and it says 1800s, but I don't really remember it. I just, I do remember her though. Mm -hmm. All right, so my last question for you, is there anything else you'd like to share with us about White Bluff? No, um, I'd just like to say that White Bluff is still a great place to live. When I, when I left and was gone for some time, I didn't want to stay any place else. I didn't want to stay in the city of Savannah. I love Savannah, but I've never stayed any place else in Savannah. I've always stayed in the White Bluff area. So when I came back, I asked the realtor to, to look in the White Bluff area, White Bluff Coffee Bluff area for me, and he uh, found me. Um, that's the kind of place that I wanted to, to live in with surroundings that I was familiar with and the people who I was familiar with. So I was back home. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Um, yeah. All right. Anything else? No, that's it. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing with us today. We're really glad you're here. And thank you so much for that list of names. That's awesome. And thank you so very much. Thanks. Okay.